Six years ago, I got a call from John Wells to tell me I was going to receive this award. He presented it to me at the 2010 annual WG Awards, just as I presented here tonight. Spoiler alert, Arthur, it's not a big bronze eagle. It's like a silver dollar on steroids. It's the only award that doesn't get you a big bird. <laughs> Arthur, or John, John Wells began his call with these words, or words very much like them, and in 2011, I made freedom of information requests to Homeland Security and the NSA and the AMPTP to see if their archives included our conversation, but I have not yet received a reply. So you'll have to take my word that this is what I heard John say. One of the nice things about being president of the Guild is that on some occasions you get to bring good news to good people. Arthur Sellers is a good person, and I'm going to recklessly assume this was good news for him when he heard it. I knew it was good news for me to be asked to present the Morgan Cox Award to him. The award is given to someone whose vital ideas, continuing efforts, and personal sacrifice best exemplify the ideal of service to the Guild, which the life of Morgan Cox so fully represented. Arthur Sellers' professional and Guild achievements are many, and there are many areas in which our lives ran parallel. There are things I didn't know about Arthur until I tackled the difficult work of exhaustive and extensive research into his life. We had lunch. As it turns out, we have a shared history of risky behavior. As young men, we both rode big motorcycles, worked as professional actors, and wrote comedy for Richard Pryor. Arthur also served on the board of directors, sat on negotiating and other committees, and spent thousands of selfless hours serving the economic and professional interests of the great community of writers. Arthur survived the challenges, thrived professionally, and added immeasurably to the life of this guild and to all of its members, so many of whom are here tonight and some of whom have already left. So it's with great pleasure that I present the Morgan Cox Award to Arthur Sellers. <laughs> Thank you, Carl, for that uh, wonderful introduction and even better eulogy. Uh, <laughs> no, Carl, really, seriously, he's the real, real deal, folks, and it's an honor to call him a friend. Uh, <laughs> uh, frankly, this award was very, very unanticipated, and uh, it's deeply appreciated, I and mean, it's very, very humbling. I mean, everybody says that, but it's true. But it also is, is a, it's a bookend, I think, to a moment uh, back in 1981 when I was a relatively new member of the Guild, and not that much involved. And I was on my first picket line out in front of 20th Century Fox, where they were actually shooting at that time my first film. I mean, it was a big deal for me. And I was feeling some pressure because I'd been contacted to put it gently, by the director and some of the powers that be, because it was one of those rare and truly unnatural occurrences in Hollywood where they wanted the writer on the set. And uh, I was torn, frankly, and I toyed with the idea of just doing the chaplain bit and walking backwards. And I could have been through the gate, but I couldn't because a couple of television writers had come up and thanked me. And it occurred to me that all of those writers out there were walking for each other as well as themselves. And then I realized that for the first time in my ego-driven life, I was part of something much bigger than myself and so much more worthwhile. And I just never looked back. You know. Because all of us are really, in effect, the owner-operators of this mothership that we call the Writers Guild. And as individuals, it's in our own best interest to do any little thing we can to keep it strong, up-to-date, and relevant, because if not us, who? And so when you do that, you gain so much more than you give. It's a privilege to sit in a committee or on the board of directors, on our negotiating committee with your fellow writers, 
especially you know, when it includes the likes of a, of a Frank Pearson or John Furia or Anne Marcus or George Kirgo. And you learn so much more that you could learn nowhere else. And you learn about the guild, of course, you know, and you learn about the business and you learn how things really work. And you learn about our craft and you learn about yourself and you grow. And you get to take that with you and use it every day, everywhere. So to be acknowledged in this evening you know, by, by one's peers is kind of like getting the best thank you in the world for just helping out on deck. So there are too many people for me to thank personally, so let me just reciprocate by saying thank you first to the Morgan Cox Award Committee and the Board of Directors for your long and generous memories of my service. In the age of Snapchat, it's an achievement to be remembered for 20 seconds. And a huge thank you to the Writers Guild staff, past and present, from the exec directors all through the ranks, for your constant dedication on our behalf. We're a fusty, cranky bunch to work for, and yet you toil away like true believers, treating us with all undue respect. So thank you. I must thank my lovely wife, Lynn, for her ardent support of the Guild all these years, for helping out when she was asked and when she wasn't asked. And she's put in nearly as many hours as I have just listening to me pontificate and vent and proselytize about the Guild. And so, honey, thank you. You are an ad hoc member of the union as far as I'm concerned. A quick thank you to my son Ripley for his show business timing and being born just when I needed to step back a little bit, and so I got to claim parental leave instead of PTSD. <laughs> Another quick thank you to my sister Becky, who's visiting and with us tonight. She's been my number one fan all along, and sis, you don't know what it means to me to have you here. And finally, and most important, and please hear me when I say this, thank you, the members of the Writers Guild, for having me in your rarefied company all these years. You're the tip of the spear in American film, broadcast, and new media. And your membership, and my membership card, are the two most enduring and precious treasures I could ever have hoped to have. I am eternally grateful. Thank you, and let's get on with the show. <laughs>